Hi, and welcome back to another Flashlight review. Today, we're going to be looking at the Workhost WK20S. This is something different. It's a dive flashlight, and it's the only one that I actually own. But uh, overall, I think it's a solid performing flashlight, has excellent throw and heat sinking capabilities. I've used it for about a couple of weeks now, and it's certainly built like a tank. I don't know if you can sort of tell under the camera, but definitely it's quite heavy compared to some other lights of similar size. And it's also waterproof rated at 150 meters. So I think that's really impressive for a 20 to 30 dollar flash out. I'll go a bit more into what it's made of and some of its construction in a moment, but this is just some of the things that you get with the lights. So you get the USB cable that attaches to an external charger. You have a lanyard. I've never seen a lanyard like this before. It's got a grippy sort of thing here on the end really large lanyard hole that you can thread that through it also comes with the 18650 battery so you can see here it's workos branded 18650 cell button top cell though it does take a flat top cell as well and i'll give you a little closer look of the charger because it doesn't have onboard charging it's very simple sort of charger and you can fit in a whole a few different sort of batteries in there it tells you in the back with your mind battery charger 26 650 18 650 16 340 14 500 and 10 440 so you know even if you're looking for uh, a, a general charger to have around a spare charger it's really good that they include it with this one here are a few of my other flashlights just for a size comparison see the wk20s here and Probably more resembles your Convoy M21B or Convoy M21F host. It's a little bit closer as well to the IF22A. You've also got the Wubin C2 Convoy L21B here on the side. But yeah, it's certainly around the same size as the M21F, okay, and the M21B over on that side. All right, so let's talk a bit about the overall construction, LED lens, bezel, and reflector. So you can see here you've got this standard type 3 glossy black anodizing. It's the same stuff that you see on all the other Workhost lights out there, even the ones that are glossy, um, you know, with different colors. Fine, they just use that same anodizing. Definitely does the trick and is reasonably durable, but it can be a little bit slippery. That's the only thing. So the walls I've noticed of the flashlight are also thicker than all of my other flashlights. It's slightly thicker. Don't know if you can tell, but um, just over the side here, you can see pretty thick sort of walls. And feels very solid, like it could take some serious drops, could take a serious beating without any issues. The battery tube uh, also has double O-rings, very thick ones on each side to ensure waterproofing. So just show you up close, it has them on both the head and the tail end. Okay, but the knurling is a little bit different on the head of this battery tube, as you can see, it's a little finer, uh, whereas on the back end of the battery tube, you've got more of these, uh, you know, more spaced out square threads, whereas these are not square cut here on the head. And these thicker O-rings that you see on both sides of the battery tubes are uh, something that you don't see on most flashlights. They just have a single O-ring, probably quite a thin one as well from what I've noticed in the past. So definitely, I mean, in order to, to match up to that 150 meter water resistance, there needs to be a bit of extra protection there. Under the hood, you've got an SST 40 LED paired with a smooth reflector. Makes a really good throw though. An SFT40 will probably throw further. And I have actually unscrewed the bezel. It's easy to unscrew it. There's no uh, there's there's no sort of thread lock or anything under there to stop you from getting into it. Okay, but it does make a very, very strong seal. You've, you've got a very large O-ring just surrounding on the edge of the flashlight, which is gonna stop any water from getting into the light itself. And um, not only that, you do also have an O-ring just underneath the head of the flashlight, the bezel of the flashlight. So there's dual protection there as well. So double O-rings on every part of the flashlight. Up close, you can see the bezel here, very smooth sort of design. I mean, there's a, a little bit of, 
you know, a little bit of a design there, but not really cutouts. They're just tiny little indentations here as well. It's all quite smooth and, you know, it's surprising that there's not any knurling on the flashlight given that it's quite a smooth anodization. The head is a lot wider than the body at 39 millimeters and you can dissemble everything as I showed you before. The head, the battery tube to get inside and perform an emitter swap. And as I mentioned before, there's no onboard charging, which makes sense as this is a diving light. No, a lot of people don't like those rubber gaskets as well. You know, they tend to not be so reliable, especially after a few years of use, they can get worn out, fall off, that kind of thing. You don't want any water getting into a uh, dive light, especially. So yeah, thankfully workers have included the external charger that USB external charger. This light is operated through a side switch. It's an aluminium button and uh, feels pretty solid, but at the same time, doesn't take much pressure to actually um, activate the flashlight itself. In terms of the UI, I mean, it's quite simple. You've got that low, click it to, to access low, click again, medium, high, turbo, okay. And back and then it just goes back to the beginning again if you want to switch off just click and hold press and hold and it switches off it remembers that last mode as well that you've been in and that's it very simple given that this is a dive light you don't want anything like enduro or any type of difficult ui to use in those circumstances you just want that light to work turn on and have a simple interface so here are a couple of ceiling bounce tests that I conducted and I put the flashlight on high which is the third mode and I was really surprised to see how long this thing could last on high and um, dissipate that heat and like I mentioned before it's quite a heavy hefty sort of light with thicker walls so at the same time you know I was expecting this to be able to last a bit longer given just the extra heat sinking abilities that it have so you can see it just starts 100% even by 5 minutes 10 minutes near to the 15 minute mark, it's still at 90% of its output. And at that point it drops to just 60% at 15 minutes and holds the end of the test around 24 minutes. Here's another test that I ran just on turbo and that's the fourth mode. And you can see also similar sort of pattern. It starts slowly ramping down. Okay, about around the four and a half minute mark, it starts ramping down quite considerably. But before that, you know, up to the four, four and a half minute mode, you know, you get 90 to 100% of the output of the flashlight, which is really amazing. I mean, for most flashlights on turbo, especially smaller lights, you're not going to get that sort of performance. And the interesting thing is, is that it wasn't even that hot to hold. It was, you know, it was fairly warm, but it wasn't dangerously hot or uncomfortably hot for me to hold down the battery tube. Okay, you can see it starts dropping down around about that four, five, five minute mark and goes to around 30%. I did reactivate turbo again just before at the 10 minute mark and it went back up to about 90% output then slowly ramps down over two minutes back to that 20% mark, which I ended the test. I've also got some readings from my Oppo Lightmaster Pro, and you can see even on the lowest mode, it throws 100 meters. I mean, pretty decent. I mean, considering it's got the SST40, it's not a dedicated throwy kind of LED, especially because it's a, it's a domed emitter. But, uh, you know, on the turbo mode, 447 meters. That's really impressive. Probably going to need a little bit of throw if you're using this down in the water especially just to cut through some of the debris and uh, things floating around in the water. Color rendering index was around 64, which is quite reasonable for a light like this, which is designed more for visibility. And the CCT hovered between 4,800 to 4,956 K. So definitely more on the neutral end, which is good. This light is rated at 2000 lumens and the beam is definitely more on the throwy end. Even with the SST40, I find it quite credible that it throws 447 meters. I mean, those of you who are interested in throwers and maybe just want something that lasts a little bit longer on those high modes as well, might even want to consider this light if you're not you know, specifically using it for diving. I think it's an excellent host for dissipating heat. And if even if you, you know, swap in a different LED in there, I'd be curious to see what would happen. That's a mod that I, I'm thinking of doing myself.
So some considerations, there's no onboard charging like I mentioned before, though I'd say that's warranted given that it is a dive light and you don't want any sort of weaknesses in the body or anywhere that water can get in easily given that these rubber gaskets do tend to wear out after some time. It also has a larger head size at the 39mm, so though you can put it in your pocket, it, it is something that is on the larger and more sort of similar to that M21B type host. So yeah, it's going to be a little bit tricky in the pocket. You can still do it, okay, but uh, that's the price you pay if you want something that throws a little bit further as well. Another thing is the metal side switch, and it's quite easy to locate, activates without much pressure, but personally I wish that Workos went with a recessed rubber button instead, it's kind of similar to the, the rubber buttons they have on some of their other flashlights like the FC13, it would just mean less chance of accidental activation in your pocket, but I get why they've gone with this design as well, more simple, especially you know, you don't want to be fumbling around in the water trying to figure out where the button is. But it would have been nice to see a button that had uh, like a light or something like that as well on it, like a rubber button. So overall, if you're looking for a waterproof dive light or general light to take with you near water, this is a great quality budget option. And like I said, it's got quite a sturdy build there, especially if you're handling quite roughly as well. These thicker walls are going to handle a bit of a knock. You can even use this as a long range flashlight, even if you're not a diver or if you don't use it near, you know, for fishing or anything like that. It's due to its excellent sustained performance on those high and turbo modes. I also like that you can get into the head of the flashlight, which allows for some other mods like the SFT40. So if you're interested in this light, I have put a link in the description. Have a look at it there. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer your questions. If you like this video as well, do me a favor and click the like button. It just helps me to get it out to more people. And yeah, if you want to see me make more reviews, make sure you subscribe. This is the Workhost WK20S. And it's got it on the lowest mode here at the moment. You can see all these little shrubs and grass, grasslands up the front here, and there's some trees to the right. Okay, let's bump it up a notch. That's the kind of medium setting. There's four settings. Okay, medium. This, even in the medium setting, it still hits the trees right out the back there. Okay. You can see there, it's just highlighting the trees all the way out the back. Especially the trunk. Okay. Bump it up a notch. Third setting, this is high. And uh, does a good job at any of these. Any of these trees up the front, as you can see there. A little grass here. Lining up that grass very well, but uh, you can see it. So we're hitting the trees on the back very easily. Okay, and that's the highest. This is the turbo mode, or the highest mode, 100%, I suppose you'd call it. Uh, just it's too. No, it's it's okay for the stuff in the front here. Yeah, it's not really. It's not um, overexposing on the camera or in person, it's still comfortable enough to look at. Okay, but uh, quite amazing. The throw on this beam, easily hitting those trees off in the distance. And uh, down the left hand side as well. It doesn't really seem to be ramping down, I can't detect it really ramping down much maybe slightly so still the highest mode and in terms of heat it's yeah just slightly warm yeah slightly warm definitely not hot and the beam's quite nice you know, a large central hot spot and uh, circular spill on the edges of the beam you have a little bit of ringiness from the bezel but that doesn't interfere with the main part of the beam can't really even see it on camera okay let's just go through the different modes again so we've got the lowest mode here as you can see 
because of the orange peel reflector, the hotspot is is basically just not too harsh. There we go. Medium. High. High, uh, well, 100% mode there. And we'll just go for a little stroll.